Vietnam, Tsinchi volunteers work together with the local government to carry out aid distribution. In Guangfu Township, we take a look at how medical staffs are caring for the seniors suffering from dementia. Selamat datang ke Dahel Line, saya Simon Gan. Terima kasih menyertai sesi berita kita. In Vietnam's Tainin province, such volunteers recently worked together with the local government and an NGO to carry out aid distribution. They provided rice, daily necessities and also monetary aid to 1,250 families. Take a look. <laughs> Vietnam's Tainin province is located near the Cambodian border. Due to the pandemic, lives of the locals have been very difficult. Since she has worked together with the local government and the Vietnam Association for Victims of Agent Orange to carry out relief distributions. Because Tainin province is located near the border, they have very strict pandemic prevention restrictions. The lives of many local residents have been heavily impacted, so we came here this time to distribute aid to the impoverished families. The two-day aid distributions have helped 1,250 families. Besides providing rice and daily necessities, volunteers also provided monetary aid, helping the locals solve their problems at hand. Yes, it does. Previously, my other family members had the job, but due to the pandemic, they have lost their jobs. As the new year is arriving, we are unable to buy anything. But now we have this money, thank you so much. I, on behalf of all the government servants in Tainin province and also the victims of Agent Orange, express our deepest gratitude towards Ji. You have provided much aid for the impoverished and we thank you for the support and care provided. Due to the pandemic, there's a limited number of volunteers from other provinces. Therefore, volunteers can only mobilize local volunteers to help. Li Bak Tuet is a local from Tainin province and has gathered over 20 volunteers to help with the distribution. We are thankful that Siji has head over to Tainin province to carry out aid distribution. The people are now able to live a better life and also have a gift for the upcoming New Year. This is the first time our family has participated in a charity event like this. We're all very happy and deeply touched. As the local residents carry the aid supplies back home, smiles can be seen on their faces as they do not need to worry about the new year anymore. It is hoped that their lives can turn for the better in the coming year. In Busan, Korea, Granny Kang, who is 79 years old, originally was a sanitation worker at a mall. But after the pandemic, she lost her job. And after she had a surgery for a myocardial infarction, her medical debt piled up. Upon hearing her unfortunate story, such volunteers in Korea visited her and provided much-needed care. At early 5 in the morning, volunteers set out from Seoul. A journey of 5 hours and 400 kilometers arriving at Busan. The floor heating is dysfunctional, and the only heat source in the room comes from the bed, so if it's cold, I wear my mask and cover my face. 79-year-old Granny Kong's husband passed away as she relies on part-time jobs for income. After the pandemic struck, she had to undergo surgery due to myocardial infraction. As medical bills piled up, she is unable to pay. She could only return home to recuperate. This is the red button here. After you pressed it, you'll be directed to the emergency call screen. The refrigerator is empty. After understanding her needs, volunteers immediately went out to purchase food, sincerely picking those in which can be stored without a refrigerator. It's cold now, so you won't have to use a refrigerator to store this. Granny, this red bean soup can be heated up simply by hot water, and you may eat it after opening the package. Thank you, I'll use the subsidy for next month. You're like bodhisattvas. Thank you. Holding hands tightly, Granny Kong is filled with thankfulness as the winter doesn't seem that cold anymore. 
affected by the pandemic, teach volunteers in Shenyang send winter gifts to care recipients' homes. They also care for solitary seniors again, whether they are in old houses without heater or in closed communities under epidemic restriction control. Volunteers went just in time to send winter warmth during the cold winter. Despite the cold weather, Grandma Zhang went out early to wait at the street. The public toilet is no longer used. It's frozen already. Grandma Zhao has been living alone for more than 30 years. Her house is simple, but fortunately someone always misses her. Another care recipient, Ma Tao, also worries the volunteers. Four residents in the community have been diagnosed with COVID. Everyone needs to be cautious when going out in the community. You haven't recognized me, right? I'm sure you can't tell who I am when dressed like this. Volunteers deliver the materials to the care recipient's home and also cheer them up. Affected by the pandemic, this winter warmth event in Shenyang has changed to delivering gifts to each household. More than 100 volunteers walk into 54 impoverished families. When Wu Zainan saw the volunteers, she shed tears immediately. It was rare to see so many people present in the little house. It's cold, you have to wear more. Do you feel cold? Yeah. Yeah. Giving her thick quilts and helping her put on thick jackets, so the volunteers made her laugh again. Siji has sent out daily necessities, including clothes and food, to me. I'm very grateful. We are one family. This warmth is delivered into care recipients' homes as well as in their hearts. In Liancheng, China, there is a father who treated alcohol as his staple food for the past 30 years. Upon learning his situation, such volunteers head over to care for this family, changing their lives around. Take a look. This vase of alcohol used to be the staple food for Zhou Fakun. I treated it like drinking tea. When I come back home, I'll drink a little. He only wants to drink alcohol and does not want to eat rice. One second you see him pour a bowl, and then one second later he would come and pour another bowl. When it's time for dinner, he would say that he does not want to eat any more. For the past 30 years, alcohol has been his staple food as he's almost drunk every day. Therefore, he became the main care recipient of Tsuji Charity Care Program. It's thanks to all of you. When you came over, all of you kept telling me to quit, so I actually quit drinking. A Tsuji sister told him that he should not drink alcohol anymore. He remembered what the sister told him, and he just quit drinking. They are able to listen to what the volunteers say because they also agree with the volunteers. Nobody dared to step into their house as they never cleaned up their house before. Only volunteers are willing to lead the children to clean up their house. As the mother does not know how to clean up the house, Tsuji sisters have taught her slowly. Tsuji brothers and sisters have brought these clothes for me, and when they see my hands are cracked, they kept on rubbing Vaseline on my hands. All of you have done so much helping us clean the floor and the table and also bring supplies for us. I'm really touched. All of you are so kind to us. Now, the father knows how to make dinner for his daughter. On weekends, the whole family will head out to do recycling. This family does not waste their time anymore as their lives have become more and more steadfast. In Haiko City, Hainan Province, the retired staff of the Bureau of Forestry and Landscaping meet every afternoon to do recycling. The recycling point opened at the end of August last year and is a place offered by the property management for the volunteers to do recycling. In the era of e-commerce, packaging waste is seen every day. No matter if it's a sunny or rainy day, to the volunteers will go collecting recyclables. Today I have collected three trucks of recyclables already. In early morning I went with Sister Shouyin to collect one truck. In the dormitory of the Bureau of Forestry and Landscaping, the retired staff meet again to do recycling. Sometimes during the noon time, they will collect some styrofoam. Yes, they're really amazing. I also admire both of them very much. Their diligent practice of environmental protection is obvious to all. This 120 square meter space is provided by the property management. I have two purposes. It's not hygienic to put the recyclables outside, while it's clean to put them here. When you do recycling, 
everyone would notice. So it is good for a property management to be involved. The Garden Community Recycling Point, which was established at the end of August last year, is dedicated to building a good community. There's a lot of ash on the floor. It's getting more. Sister Lailan pick up those thin plastics from outside and place them here, making it neat and beautiful. So it's not smelly anymore. This recycling point is very great. We have to cherish it. In Taiwan, the government has set up care stations for dementia patients in the communities. Hualien Tzu Hospital has set up four such care stations in Hualien. Today, we take a look at the seniors in one of the care stations located in Guangfu Township. Grandpa Chin San is 90 years old and is a local Guangfu Township resident. He has received Japanese education. Being on time and respecting teachers is his habit since he was little. The long-term care station opens at 8. I get here before 8 o'clock. Sometimes that I get here, there are three vehicles waiting for me. Grandma will be sitting in front of the house. When I get here, I will go greet them. Grandpa will take out his watch. I ask him why he came so early. Grandpa would say, the station is not open yet. He would joke with me. I will rush to open the door. This happens very often. Seniors usually get up at 5 or 6 in the morning. They come here as they have nothing else to do. They look forward to companionship here. They will not be so lonely, so Guangfu Long Term Care Station is a place of a fortune. In recent years, the government has been promoting care projects for dementia patients. The geriatric centers and hospitals have been extended to care stations and communities. I think the care stations give seniors a feeling of belongings, as it is like his second home. When seniors do not go there on Saturdays, they feel weird. Some seniors' family members ask us, can the care station operate on weekends? Their parents want to go there on weekends. He feels a sense of belonging and has found a good friend there. <laughs> Hualien City Medical Center's Dementia Care Center Director Zhang Xinling has been in the nursing profession for more than 30 years. She has provided care for dementia patients in the care station, extending the hospital service into the communities. Her initial aspiration comes from her grandmother, who also suffered from dementia. I hope to avoid tragedies that happen to dementia patients. My grandmother has passed away after she was lost. I think people have less children now, and they have more responsibilities. Through the care station, these children can still work, benefiting the society. Seniors should have a good life during their old age. At least he can still live happily.
more than 40 Timor members from Kaohsiung and Pingtung traveled to Taitung to provide dental cleaning for persistent vegetative state patients. To calm nervous patients, one dentist even sang during the dental cleaning procedure. Traveling southbound, the bus full of medical volunteers has arrived at Genesis Social Welfare Foundation, Taitung Branch in eastern Taiwan. In just a short time, volunteers have set up the pipes and equipment, putting the small portable dental kit into action in dental cleaning for persistent vegetative state patients. Even though the patient's hands are secured, the nursing personnel still holds the patient's hands to comfort them, and one of the dentists even soothes the patient's nerves with his singing. Singing a tune or some songs can really help calm them down if they feel scared or nervous. One of the dentists also brought his wife and daughter, the whole family coming together to volunteer. When it comes to doing good deeds, we should make the best of every opportunity. We don't usually have much opportunity to approach persistent vegetative patients, so I wanted to give this a try. The following day, volunteers made their way to a nursing home for a free clinic with the addition of ENT doctors to the group. It's so difficult for these people to go out and see a doctor. So we come to them so as to alleviate both their physical and spiritual discomfort. Despite the pandemic, the doctors stay unwavering in their promise to provide medical help in a free clinic every year for people in need. In Keelong, Mr. Chen was seriously ill and stayed in bed for half a year. Such volunteers mobilized to help them clean up the house and also provided a second-hand electric bed just before the Lunar New Year. Here's more. Siji sent electric medical beds and movable bed pain chairs to this household where the father and son depend on each other. Seeing this case today made me feel like, oh, life is so hard. When my dad was sick, I was really panicked by myself. I once wanted to give up. But to be honest, he is my dad and I couldn't bear it either. Fortunately, all Tsuji brothers and sister came to help me and solve the problem that has troubled me for a long time. His father has been lying in bed for half a year and he hasn't taken a bath nor eaten well. Because the son is very busy and there's no skill to take care of his father. Actually, the son wanted to help his father, but he doesn't know how. Then we made an appointment with the son and told him that we're going to help him today. The first step is to help his dad wash. Wash away the dirt accumulate on the body for half a year and replace the bed full of modification with an electric medical bed. Without an elevator, the volunteers had to move these medical beds upstairs. It's not good for him to urinate and defecate in the bed so our team came to clean up his home and then bring the electrical medical bed here to make him sleep more comfortable. Otherwise the weather is cold and the environment is not good. It's not suitable for him with poor health, so we are here. My life and my future are filled up with hope with Zichi's help. I don't think my life is helpless anymore just because I have to take care of my dad and nothing is left. I really thank them for their help. The arrival of Zichi volunteers will share the burden for those who are carrying the weight and help those who are in difficulties and to be their great support. Holographic projection is based on mirroring objects so that the image can be projected into thin air. In the past, this can only be done with special requirements. But now, everyone is able to produce holographic projections, even utilizing the projected holograms for education purposes. Follow a report as we learn more. Just now we have seen two lipsticks in a black box, but actually only one lipstick is being presented in the box through holographic projection, bringing more visual variety to a product. Real or fake, 
It's hard to tell when looking at this magical box. With optics and mirror projections in place, items are projected into air as if it's floating. The first common product we see are LED fans that use the persistence of vision. The second common product is a pyramid that uses holographic projection. The last product is a Z-shaped holographic projection. It's simpler as it only uses a reflective plate. The sea singer Teresa Dunn was once more projected onto the stage, singing songs of memories while audiences burst in tears. Their recreation was so alike, many couldn't tell the differences. Through decades, two singers from different generations sang together, as technology behind this is called holographic projection. 3D modeling along with optics, holographic projection creates stunning visual effects on stage. But performances like these often require massive time and manual labor. Due to this, holographic projection evolved, fitting into a tiny box. Holographic projection is also known as hologram in English. Based on physics, we're actually using the light source as it projects onto the side mirrors. A 360-degree panoramic photo through the specialized app made by the team can be processed within two minutes, unlike the past where it took about two hours. We're trying to present the pictures of your holographic projection. The photo shooting took only two minutes to complete. It takes only a small black box and a phone to create a holographic projection as developers hope that more people may know about optics. Simple to understand as even elementary school students made DIY holographic projections that capture movements. Along with a VR goggle, students may immerse themselves into different learning experiences. Originally part of the integrated circuit industry, Chen Mingxiang found better interest in campus promotion than business development. Now he is creating holographic projection standards for everyone to use. Although this doesn't really have anything to do with the educational system, this is actually a form of self-media, and it will definitely help the students in the future. As teaching methods grow in variety, physics is less of a boring subject but a topic of interest. This might be the reason why Chen Mingxiang dedicates himself in promoting holographic projections on campus. In Taichung, teacher volunteers work with other NGOs to provide supplies and red envelopes for the homeless before the Lunar New Year. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you and goodbye.